Hello everyone, this is Carly Cornish from Creatively Graphics and today I'll be taking you through the process of 3D modeling the pauldron or the part that goes over the shoulder of my armor. So first we go into the Fusion 360 software and from there we go up to insert and then we click canvas which is going to be the image or the image that you've worked on or the sketch that you did if you did your sketch on a piece of paper just take a photo of it and put it onto your computer and then these guidelines that i have are just to help me figure out what percentage I need to scale up the sketch so that it can be around the right size that I actually need it to be for my shoulder because I've noticed in other times where I didn't have those guidelines in the past I wouldn't get the scale correctly and then when I would scale it into 3D slicing software it would just look really bad so that's just a little tip for you guys and then we go up to create sketch and it'll open up a new sketch for you to work on. We'll go up to the create tab and I'll click the and I'll click the ellipse button. I decided that the sketch itself that I'm going to be that I have on the screen is not exactly what I want it to be. So I'm going to go with an ellipse instead of that shape. And I'm just using these guidelines to say where I want the points to end and start for the ellipse. And that's just going to help guarantee that it is symmetrical. And then I'm going to add another ellipse, which is going to be a different part of the rim. And for this, there aren't any exact measurements. I'm just kind of doing this by eye just to see what I like and what I don't like. And now I'm starting to work on the inner symbol. And I'm just making some more guides to say where these symbols are, um, the symbol pieces are going to be. Just so I don't have to do it by eye and, and possibly get it wrong. And I'll, to be honest, I'll probably get the measurements wrong just if, just if I try to do it by eye instead of doing these guidelines. And now we have the center circles done. I'm gonna start working on the other parts of the symbol. And for this, we're gonna be using the three point arc. So you select the first point and the second point, and then you select where you want the dip to be, the center point of the dip. And that's just gonna determine angle of the slope.
And you can also select these lines outside of the edit sketch. If you need to move them a little bit, it does get a little bit difficult because the angles can change and suddenly you can end up with a really warped sketch. But if it for tiny adjustments, it can work. And there is the final 3D sketch in Fusion 360 and now we're going to move on to actually turning it into a physical 3D model. So we're going to go up and I'm good for this particular one I'm going to be choosing a shape called a torus just to get the curvature that I'm looking for. And then you just have to click on the, um, to create whatever shape you want, just click on the um, X, Y, or Z plane, whichever way is going to work best for you. If you get it wrong, you can always move it around and adjust it however you want in the drop down that's shown. And for this, I want to make sure that the torus itself, the width of it, is thick enough for the entire sketch to be on because if it's not, it's going to affect how those pieces extrude and they're not going to extru extrude either correctly or at all if it's not if it doesn't fit correctly. And then from here, I'm just going to select the particular pieces that are going to be the same length as one another. And you can just do this by holding down the shift key on a Mac. I'm not sure how you would do it on a, on a PC, but then you will hit um, extrude and for the direction, you're going to want to do one side and for the start, you're going to want to hit object and then select the object that you're going to be extruding from. And as you can see, it didn't come out correctly. And the reason why is that it's showing up on the underside of the torus and not the upper side, which is where we want it to show up. And that's how we're gonna get the curvature for the shoulder. So in order to fix this, I make a thicker, Taurus, one that doesn't necessarily have a lot of space in the center of it. And once it's once the torus is aligned with the sketch itself, we're going to move the torus itself downwards so that the sketch is farther away from the center point of the torus so that we don't have that problem of it being on the underside of the torus and not the top side.
And then again, we're going to repeat the process of selecting the particular parts of the sketch that are going to be the same size. And again, you can use the shift key for that. And then once we have all those selected, we're going to have it go from the object for the starting point and type in desired thickness. And you're going to want to make sure that when it says operation, it's going to be new body, not join, not cut, new body. Because that's going to separate it from the torus itself and it's going to create a new set of bodies and that's just going to be easier to deal with. And one thing I've noticed is that with the extrusion and everything, it can be a little bit picky about how things go. And if it's not if, the, if it's not the exact way the software wants it to be, it's not going to do it. So sometimes it takes a little finagling to figure out how it's going to work. And then once again, you just click shift and select all the pieces that you want to be the same exact thickness. And then once everything is extruded properly or to your liking, save the file and then you can export it as an STL file, save it to your desktop. And then from there, you can put it into whatever slicing software you plan on using. And we'll cover the slicing software in later tutorials. So that's all for the tutorial today, guys. Thank you for listening in. Please leave any comments or feedback. I hope you guys have a great day.